Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Fireside Chat. Tonight, I'm pleased to have Regina Norland as my guest. In addition to being an author, spiritual teacher, and counselor, Regina is a radio host at Earth Angel Radio, as well as an angel therapist and medium, color therapist, and teacher. In her work, she helps others to recognize their true self and to become aware of and connect with their own uniqueness. She encourages and empowers her clients to live the life of their dreams. Regina's own uniqueness shines through everything she does, and the main message that she spreads in this world is, be who you are and do what makes your heart sing, because it is the most important job that we have come here to do. So let's hear more from Regina now. Hi, Regina. How are you? (laughs) Hi. Hi. (laughs) Doing really well. Uh, it was very interesting as the time came closer to the show. I thought uh, I was experiencing like this show being on the radio so as from the other side because, as you said, I am also a radio talk show host mm-hmm. and I have a lot of guests on my show. But but yes. it's always different to be on this other side to be a guest on a show. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? It's yeah. so funny. I've been doing this for about four years now, and I've mm-hmm. done a t- couple of shows where I'm the guest, mm-hmm. and uh, it is a completely different experience, <laughs> isn't it? It's it is. all fun, but, you know, <laughs> it, it is just different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I have a preference about which side I prefer, but I think in some ways it's easier to be on this side. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, well, anyway, um, you wrote the book, uh, The Power of Being Different, Embrace Your Uniqueness, and it has a wealth of really powerful information in it. And um, I just wanted to um, start out, you know, where did your journey of self-discovery and your spiritual um, uh, awakening begin? And you, and, and where did it begin? <laughs> Um, yeah, originally I come from Latvia, ah. and for those who may not know, it's like a small, small country in Europe. And uh, I guess the spiritual journey started actually there. I wasn't consciously aware of it then, uh-huh. uh, but um, the time when I started to become consciously aware of was when I started to travel, which, which was about uh, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when I learned, because all my life... You know, as the, as the title of the book says, in the power of being different, um, I, I felt different, and I didn't really know what to do with it. And, uh-huh. I, and uh, if, if you read the book, like, it tells how I went through all these challenges with being, like, teased and laughed at, and even my, my parents wouldn't really understand me. And then um, I somehow... Uh, thought that there wasn't anybody else out there who felt like I felt or like see. So I also experienced like, you know, spirit visits and and seeing colors and auras. And then once I started to travel, um, then I I met other people um, who also had experienced the same thing or who were actually okay with with, uh, these spiritual experiences when I when I told them about it. They didn't try to say that it's not okay uh-huh, uh-huh. experience. And yeah. Um, yeah, it sort of kind of happened uh, just naturally. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, I know what you're talking about because I, I always felt different when I was a kid. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I, you know, I had bohemian parents for one thing mm-hmm. and... Um, they uh, they raised me differently than everybody else, and uh, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. Yeah. And later on, I discovered that uh, the main reason why was because I was empathic as a child. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm sure that you know that was the case for you too, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you feel? Did you feel everything that happened? I mean, you could. It's like you you can sense things about other people that maybe they're not even aware of themselves. Yes, I did. I did sense sense things, and and often I would also pick up um, 
the the energy of other people. Oh means, yes, that it sort of stuck with me, and I yeah. didn't know that it was other people energy. Yeah, energy. So it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. What yeah, you mean. that that's really important to know too, because a lot of times, you know, when we're feeling. Uh, depressed or down or something like that. We think it's something with us, and it's not always that way. Sometimes we're just picking up something that's uh, someone else's, and we have to learn how to distinguish and and remove those energies. Yes, which I'm sure that you do that with your clients. Yeah, and the one thing that I think is also very important, uh, which I think is happening nowadays more than like ten, ten or twenty years ago, is to have people around who support um, mm. support mm-hmm. us, like mm-hmm. or anybody support anybody who feels maybe different or who feels something out of maybe ordinary. Yes, yes. and somebody who is there to tell it's okay. Yeah, it's not like something weird, and you shouldn't be talking about it. So. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you know, you and I share something else in common that. Um, uh, a couple of things, actually. You had a very special grandmother, didn't you? Yes, I did. Let's hear a little bit about her, because I also did, and I think this is a really... I think many people in the audience probably uh, had special grandparents or, or, or aunts or uncles, and uh, I'd like to hear more about your grandmother. She sounds like an interesting lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was, and... Uh... Uh, we never really talked about it when I grew up. We never really talked about this connection that we both shared and that we had. Uh-huh. But it was it was something that was it, it was just there. It it was there. We both felt it, and and we had these different like conversations, conversations about the um, the how how things are. And uh, for those who may not know, uh, Latvia is a country. Uh, where um, um, grow, like being or living by the laws of nature uh-huh. or following following the nature rhythms is just very natural. Just by being born there, it's uh-huh. like just <laughs> there. So my grandma had all these these natural things, like with, uh, uh, on a physical level, like we would do what things we would do, where like picking the er- different herbs. Uh-huh. Or, or like you know, doing uh, with the story. One of the stories that I shared was in a book was also about like how to plant the seeds. She had this whole system of like following following the the moon phase or the days. Yes. When and how? Um, yeah, and then um, it it. I don't. I think it's just like there's so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that. Uh, it could be like almost the whole show. It could together. be, couldn't it? You know, <laughs> yes, but, it, but yeah, we did say we we had this connection, which we, as I said, we never talked about it, mm-hmm. but we just knew it was there, both of us. Um, now, you also mention the Indo- Indigo Kids in your book, and mm-hmm. um, I started researching those about six or seven years ago. Um, would you and I think you mentioned that you're also an indigo. Would you like to explain a little bit more about uh, who the indigo kids are and and what they're here to do and why? Yes, uh, indigo children. I the, the very first time that when I came across this uh, term and when I actually started to feel. Uh, this connection and, and feel like, hey, it actually sounds like like me. Yeah, <laughs> was um, also during the the angel therapy practitioner course uh, taught by Doreen Virtue, uh, which I came to to take uh, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And I had read about these indigo children and what indigo children are. They are children, kind of like the new wave of children that most. That started uh, started to be born also before, but a lot of them were born in 1970s, mm-hmm. and uh, they came with this special mission. Uh, besides their like ordinary mission, just to, like you know, for fulfill, uh, like do something for the personal gro- growth. Right. They also had this global mission to. 
to kind of the break the walls, the, the break the old systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in like in, it could be not only like in a spiritual way, but also on a physical plane to, to break all these. Uh, and on the physical plane, I mean like something that's visible, like you know, and uh, and and they they have really um, one of the the, the greatest uh, characters that that indigos have is uh, this uh, warrior spirit, but they had to be like warriors to yeah. to to break down these systems, and they are the ones who who don't follow, don't don't like to follow the rules uh-huh. if the rules don't make sense. Yes, <laughs> they they are they are very much into like into feelings, uh-huh. into feeling things, and and uh, one other thing that's important to indigo children is things have to be fair, yeah. and, and and here it comes in where like things in the past where there there, there were many things that weren't fair, mm. and even nowadays things are not fair like in politics. Oh. And, <laughs> that could <Sorry>. be more <laughs> so too. <laughs> yeah, but but and and also rules in school often are not fair mm-hmm. or uh, like and 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 that's like one of the things that that indigos came here to um, almost like so so that 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 there can be a different way how to do things mm-hmm. and and so a different way. Not only so that there can be a different way, but also to show this different way. Yes, yes. How to be, and that's why they need this warrior spirit, and and that's why very often they are not understood. Yeah. Because they are doing something like different. Yes, and rebellion is usually considered a negative thing uh, nowadays, yeah. even mm-hmm. though the country was founded on rebellion. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, but luckily enough, nowadays more and more people are uh, learn, have learned and and about about indigo children and about other children as well. Like now, there are crystal children coming in. Mm. And um, there's rainbows, aren't there? Yes, and there are rainbows as well. And uh, as I, uh, the way I understand, I'm not, I have a limited knowledge of this, so just correct me. Um, the crystals have a crystal, a uh, golden crystal clear aura. And they have different skills or uh, uh, psychic abilities than the indigo, don't they? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned about this aura, uh, because I completely forgot <laughs> about the aura. But yeah, the name uh, indigo has uh, was given uh, because of the indigo color uh, in, in aura. Mm-hmm. And crystal children, yes, they do have... Um, uh, do have uh, this crystal in aura. Um, the crystal children are considered to be uh, of the uh, the next generation uh, of these new age or children mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that you know the indigo children came with this warrior spirit to break down the 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 old systems uh-huh. and crystal children now that the way has been cleared. Maybe not completely, but right. you know the most work has been done. Right. Then right. Uh, crystal children come in, and they they sort of do the similar thing where they show this different way, mm-hmm. but they do it with love. Wow. They don't have the warrior spirit. Wow. They, everything comes from unconditional love. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> and and very many crystal children do their work and their mission uh, through music. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so music is one of the things, and very often these crystal children, they start to sing before they actually talk. And ah. and, and often they don't even get that here on this planet Earth, uh-huh. we're supposed to talk. Oh, <laughs> they just communicate telepathically. Right, right, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and, and they are very, very attracted to crystals as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not about only about their aura, right? It's about actual crystals. And the crystals that uh, said are um, well, that's a whole other show too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they are said to contain uh, vast amounts of of information about our our history and you know the records uh, uh, and information that can be tapped into. 
and they and used as well. I think that in Atlantis it was said they used crystals quite a bit for powerful things. Yes, they did. In, in, in Atlantis, they were actually the the interesting thing about Atlantis, which I found, is that they were uh, like now we have computer mm-hmm. where we can find all kind of information that we need. Uh, in Atlantis, they had crystals. Wow. They had crystal skulls. They had, like, there were different regions in Atlantis, and each region had this one big crystal, crystal skull, and pe- people just had to connect with this crystal skull, and and uh, they would find the information that they needed. Wow. That sounds a lot so, more yeah. fun than a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you think that, uh, from what you can see, from your perspective, does it look as if the, uh, there were enough indigos that came in during that time? And, and you know, of course, uh, indigos can be older as well as our age, and there's some that are even in their 70s and 80s. Yeah. But uh, does it appear that this, there really is a paradigm change going on now? I mean, are, is it working? <laughs> 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 When, when is the injustice going to go away? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> nobody has ever asked me this kind of question. <laughs> if it's working, <laughs> but it's a good question. Oh, thanks. I, <laughs> I do believe that it is working. I mean, we can see now, um, well, with, with the, the new president but that, that America has now and uh-huh. how it all went. But uh, not only that... Um, it's it's uh, just the way I see it, and like also when I was writing the book, I thought it's like these these changes that are happening uh, now. They uh, there are so many people. Uh, there are so many people who are like losing their jobs mm-hmm. nowadays, and there, there are so many people who just uh, are at the point where they think, oh, well, what am I what, what am I what am I meant to do in this life, mm-hmm. and um, and there are more than ever, ever before. Mm. And, uh, and there are so many people who are very open to spirituality. They're very open open to learn more about themselves. Mm. And it's just getting more and more and more mm. and, and bigger. And I see this is the big, big, big part of, of or actually big, big proof that it is working. Mm-hmm. Uh, because people, I, I mean, I really believe that everybody needs to, like all the, as I said in the book, like all we need to do is is just be ourselves. And and in the past, people have very often relied on on the outside sources, like you know what the what the politicians say, what the government says, what yeah. the what the people around us say, what the neighbors say, what the other family mem- members yeah, say, and tell right. us to do, tell us to do. But now, with all these uh, these these things happening, these outside things sort of breaking down and and and, and like disappearing, these outside sources. Uh, let's say the stock market thing yeah. you know, comes up to me, which was such a like big. Big um, challenge, or probably still is. I don't watch TV, so I don't know much about yeah. it. But, but still, the idea. Yeah. Um, it, it's an outside source, and that's and, and and then when it's taken away, then people are left with themselves. And if they haven't developed this relationship with itself, then now is like the perfect time to do it. Yeah. And 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 that way, I think it is it is really working because people are realizing more and more that. This is not really what I want to do in my life. Well, yeah. This is not really what I like. So. Well, you know, I hadn't thought about that, about <clears throat> people losing their jobs, that that actually could be quite a beneficial and positive mm-hmm. uh, thing to happen because, you know, I never enjoyed working in the corporate world. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I ever had a boss that I liked. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the whole structure is, is just mm-hmm. so rigid and, and uh, unyielding. And uh, it's uh, skewed in the direction of those on the top. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, what's, what, what you said uh, is what's happening today. It's like the, py- the bottom of the pyramid is starting to, to uh, shift around, and the top is going to be j- jostled off. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, there, and yeah. there's going to be a new, uh, 
uh, maybe some new forms of, of uh, ways of living that will come out of this. Mm-hmm. I think it's already happening. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I do too. Wait. Do you follow any of the 2012 stuff, the Mayan or the other prophecies that say that, <laughs> you know, we're headed towards the, a global shift in, in dimensions and consciousness? Um, I I do know a little bit, but I, I'm not very much into it. I'm uh. just seeing it uh, seeing it uh, as as being a time like this 2012. I'm seeing it as being time, if not like all the people on the planet, then most of the people are gonna be in this space where where we are gonna do do what makes our hearts sing. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be that shift because everything, everything that's happening is the way I see it is just going towards that. Huh? Yeah, it does seem that way. And, and so, the parts that are not going in that direction are just kind of falling away. Yeah, they are just, and they are just kind of yeah fading, fading away. And as yeah. more people are focused, and now with all the economy crisis. More and more people are thinking, okay, what am I going to do? And then, like, you know, since, since they, they have lost what they had, then it's like, okay, since they need to start, start almost like from the beginning, yeah, maybe yeah. some of them, then it's like, well, why don't I do then some things that I feel good about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, the only thing is that I think there might be a little difficulty with people coming from survival. At yeah. first, because there's going to be fear about, um, you know, how to just sur- to survive. Mm-hmm. And part of that is because we have uh, so many things, you know, so many, <laughs> literally so many things in our lives that mm-hmm. cost money that have to be supported. And I think that's <laughs> going to be a good thing to shift our focus away from uh, these things which take our attention away from ourselves and... Uh, divest ourselves from things like the televisions and the radios and the gadgets and the cell phones and the new cars and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like you said, um, you were born in a country that was connected to the land. And that's a mystical and magical experience. And it it can't be replaced. And, uh, you know, we're so disconnected from uh, the source of all things now that uh, we really are out of whack, <laughs> and you know it's uh, it's time to uh, you know balance the scales again. Yeah, this is this is really like the great time. I, I always think that it's very very uh, important how we look at things. Mm-hmm. It's like what my uh, the angel therapy uh, uh, practitioner, like angel therapy teacher, uh, Doreen, always says that uh, it's not. Uh, it's not the, the the problem that is a problem, but that's like that's how how we look uh-huh. at this problem. Like we can choose right. to look that it's like really all so bad, and what am I gonna do? And we can look other ways. Like wow, great! There's this, there's it, this came up for a reason. There is some kind of lesson here. So what's the lesson? What can I do to to improve my yeah. life from this challenge? Yes, and also how to transform our problems, and and just like you said, um, to see that what is in front of us is something positive that that will help us expand and grow, no matter what it is, even if it seems like a hardship at the time, it 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 always turns out to be something that helped us move a little further along our path. Um, You mentioned Dor is Doreen Virtue, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, is she the one that taught you about angel therapy? Yes, she is the one who's uh, who's angel therapy practitioner's course I took and, and the mediumship course. Oh, really? How was yeah. that? That was really great experience. Huh. And, and and what also is great that it's not just the class, but, uh-huh. but then uh, like you know, then then it becomes it's almost like this one big big angel family. Oh, know, nice. We meet other people, and then we and keep in touch with each other and there's like the message board um, for for those who have went through this course. So yeah, it was really, really magical. I I'm have, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to segue into this uh, to the discussion about angels. Um, 
because a lot of people believe that you know there are, that we are angels and uh, that the angels come and, and uh, incarnate into bodies, and also that they enter in briefly for a moment or two just to do specific things all the time. I have had those experiences myself. Um, what has been your experience with, with the angelic realms, and uh, what can you share with, with our listeners? <laughs> yeah, I, I, the way how angels came into my life was pretty um, unique, okay. <laughs> uh, meaning that I never really, uh, never really thought about angels or ever being connected with angels. I uh. always had uh, associated angels with the church. Yeah, and, yeah. And I I have never went to church. I have never I didn't grow up in any religion and Oh good. And so, <laughs> yes, I'm fortunate I think so. for you. <laughs> yes, I don't need to unlearn the thing. <laughs> so but so and, and you know, because of that, because of that belief that I had, uh, there was no way that I would ever be connected with angels. Uh-huh. So and then it just kind of came. I started to take the color therapy class. Uh-huh. Not I started. I, I took a color therapy class, and people were just talking about angels and then how angels leave feathers when they have visited us, and how we can ask angels for help. And I was listening, and I was doing my best to be open-minded about it. Uh-huh. And, but I had no experiences to share, and at that point, I wasn't really quite sure if they are really... Uh, if they really mean what they say, if that's really so, or is it kind of like a fairy tale? Right, right. <laughs> so, and then it just started somehow where where I was thinking after this color therapy class, I just started to, uh, I was thinking not about angels, I was thinking about this color color therapy. How could I do it, and and how could, how could I start to to offer some color readings, consultations, and so. And there it was. I was like, I, I was walking down the street, and and suddenly, once I, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, walking in, in my thoughts, and then suddenly felt like I'm supposed to like look look up, and uh. in front of me there was this white set of floating down. <laughs> So yeah, that was my first experience, and of course I thought it was just like coincidence. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. then uh, those things just happened more and more, and like I would leave the house and and uh, come back, and I would find feathers on my bed, <laughs> <laughs> and and those were the first signs that I got, and then I started to experience angels actually uh, visiting me, where I would like actually hear their whispers, and I would hear some music, some sounds, and, uh-huh. and it always happened in the times uh, or in the moment where I was thinking something that was important to me, uh-huh. something that I, I was very, like from my whole heart, I was really, hmm, like, either worried or, or I was wondering, I just really liked something and I was wondering what could I do with this uh-huh. like thing or area in this area that I like to improve it or, or move forward. Move further. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's kind of how it all started with angels. And then I... Um, yeah, I feel like I think like I have like the whole chapter in the book. So how I got to this angel therapy class, class how how angels actually um, they told me I'm supposed to go. And when I say told, I just got this sense. Right, right. And like no hurt is with my inner uh, soul, with my inner eye, or uh, or heard in my mind, mm-hmm. telling that this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm sure you have experienced it as well. But oh, yeah. I think it's almost like something takes over <laughs> yes <laughs> the body, and we just like do, do yeah. things, not even knowing yeah. why we're yeah. doing it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how how they did. And then from from there, it's just like they're part of. Once I came to 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 this angel therapy class, then you know from that day on, even more than than before, they have been actually a part of my life every single moment. I give them all kinds of jobs. One <laughs> thing about the angels is that we have to ask them in order 
Yes, for them that's to help us. very important, isn't it? It's, yes. They can't then, step in and help us uh, because of the free will thing. Yeah. But if we ask, they can, they can, you know, it opens the door and we can, they can do anything, anything we ask. Yeah, and then one thing which is really cool, which I discovered, it's also very important how we ask. So with this free will thing, I told angels, I give you full permission at any time, no matter when it is, mm. and, and just do whatever it takes to help me to be on my path and do whatever, uh, whatever it takes mm-hmm. to help me. I like that. Whatever. That's good. <laughs> so in that way, even if I remember, if, even if I forget, yeah, to ask them, you've already so, asked, and you don't have yeah. to keep doing it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. I like that. I have to remember that one. <laughs> yeah, and then the other thing with angels, what I found was really good was angels. Please give me the sign. Oh. Like what am I supposed to do? But give the sign uh, or give this message to me so loud and clear that I cannot possibly miss it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, uh, what are some of the things that uh, showed up for you that way? I mean, did you, you know, uh, just how, how did that manifest for you? <laughs> when, when the angels tell me loud and clear? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they just keep, let's say, I, I, I can tell, share a little bit my latest experience about the, with the, the angels is um, I have been feeling that uh, I need to move. Okay. And not only, like, spiritually move, but really on a physical plane, physical oh, level, yeah. move. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I, uh, I am pretty, I'm not really tied up to just about anything, so I could just, like, you know, pick my things and just move. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and, but then the question is, where do I move to? Where oh, do I yeah. go? Yeah. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it's the whole, whole world is open, yeah. uh, then where do I go? So I asked angels, I said, okay, angels, I feel like I'm, I'm meant to move somewhere, and I feel like I need some big changes in my life, like, for better, and and uh, just, just tell me what to do, like, to give me some kind of sign. Mm. And then, from that moment on, I kept getting everything about Hawaii. Oh. I, I walked in a store, the, the very same store that I've been going to just about every other day, the grocery store, <laughs> uh-huh. and, and it's like this. Uh, kind of um, organic store. They have also not only food, but some car books and oils and like this whole big thing. And then I suddenly saw this this Maui volcano oil. <laughs> it just jumped out at me. So the next next day, I walked in the store. I see a uh, Hawaiian yoga DVD. Oh. <laughs> the next thing I know, I talk to the the guy in the store who is promoting some kind of like vitamins or so and he has this necklace and it says there is a yin and yang symbol and there is um, it's there is written Hawaii. <laughs> my friend my friend and I we rent the movie and uh, at the end of the movie the main character in the movie buys two tickets to his assistant to go on vacation to Hawaii. Oh. So um, and, and it just happened like every single day things like that. That's wonderful. And, That's and wonderful. somebody calls me, or right, there other things like somebody called me, and 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 uh, just just kind of we were talking about some business uh, stuff, and and suddenly this person who I had never met before started to tell me about wanting to move to Hawaii. That they they he likes Hawaii a lot, and huh. he wants to move to Hawaii. And 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 then somebody sending me this the the email telling about some workshop in Hawaii. So, and it happens like every single day, something about Hawaii. Uh, so that's how they bring the messages very loud and clear. Uh, that sounds pretty obvious to me. <laughs> yeah. And what's so, funny, I've even been thinking about Hawaii lately. <laughs> <laughs> Not to move there, just to visit. Mm-hmm, yeah. But um, you mentioned something interesting about, <clears throat> about synchronicity. And um, I think that's really important for people to understand that uh, you know, to not just dismiss the the things that we that that uh, uh, get our interest. For instance, you know, when when you when the uh, feather fell and you you looked up and so on and so forth. 
And when there are so many of those that add up uh, that you can no longer deny it, that mm -hmm. something is, a hidden hand is at work. You can't, you, you just, you can no longer say, okay, well, that was just a feather, that was a bird. You know, and then you keep saying, well, that yeah. was just this and that. But there's a certain point, you know, when they, it just happens constantly and you think, all right, just give it up. It wasn't coincidence. Something's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really important for people to trust that feeling inside and to go with it and develop it. And that is our intuitive, intuitive senses. Mm -hmm. it, it is. It is very important. It's like... Uh, I say about, uh, we, we learned in the angel class uh, that, uh, uh, you know, it's not only uh, enough to ask, of course, angels are going to help, but it's it's a teamwork. Yes, and not only, yes. not only with angels, like, you know, there may, may be people who are not very much into angels, but they believe in God, or they believe in fairies, or, or yeah. the uni they call it universe. Or guides. So, yeah. yeah, so wh whoever it is, when we ask for the guidance or we ask for help, it's important to work as a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, or, and take the action. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. And some people call it the, their team. <laughs> Instead of calling them angels or this or that, they say, my team. Oh, and that cool. way, you know, it keeps it kind of generic and you don't have to believe in, in this or that or the other thing. It's just, it's a team effort. That's really good. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And, and one more thing about these synchronicities is that if we see something one time or we hear something one time, mm -hmm. and it kind of figures out something within us, but then we can think, oh, well, just, you know, it just happens. But then we hear the same thing the second time. Mm -hmm. That could be a very good, like, indicator that there might be a message. And then if we hear or see it the third time, that means, like, definitely there is a message there. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. To pay also to, yeah. And, you know, people have, um, there's new numbers are used quite a bit, too. Um, it's uh, said that 1111 is a number that comes up for a lot of people, and uh, we have our own personal numbers, you know, that seem to keep cropping up. Well, you'll glance up at the clock, and it's uh, 333 or something like that, and, I try. I kind of use those as little ticklers to um, to be a little bit more awake in that moment and to be more present. Just think, okay, well, that's interesting. Well, what's going on around me now, and and where am I, and so on and so forth, and and just be a little more present and in my body and uh, aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doreen has actually the, this book, uh, Angel Numbers. Mm -hmm. I've there, read some of that. I haven't read that book, but yeah. Yeah, yeah so there, there's this, like angelic messages uh, from one from one to to 999. Yes, So yes. for each number, like, as you said, like, you know, we see three, we see, I mean, I'm sure there are all kinds of other things in numerology or so where we can look up what it means when yeah, we see these yeah. numbers. But. Yeah, I, th I think that's really interesting. I, I've, I've looked up... Um, her charts before and found them very interesting. I I always forget what they, you know, I always forget what certain numbers mean. But then, you know, if it's really if I feel it's really important to figure it out, I'll go onto the internet and do a search on it. <laughs> but uh, and it's always interesting. I mean, it leads it kind of leads you down an interesting path, and you learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, what about four legged angels? Do you uh, do you believe in those? More like an angel. Needs dogs and cats and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. I do believe everything that's positive and... <laughs> and loving. And loving and comes from a place of love. Yeah, yeah. And that's almost everything that's natural, isn't it? Yeah. In the that's, the that's... part... Yeah, and the part that isn't coming from love is the part that's separating from the natural part. Mm. Yeah, I, I have a little dog, and uh, I, I, I learn more about love from her than I have about any, from anybody. <laughs> um, you know, she's such a... She loves people so much that when she's in the car uh, driving with me, and if she even sees a person, she'll just whine and want to go out and jump all over them and kiss them. <laughs> yeah, it's kind I, of embarrassing because I can't hang on to her. <laughs> and, and people, I, 
love her, mm-hmm. and, and then some people mm-hmm. who are not uh, interested in, in animal affection kind of <laughs> shoo her away, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I always think with, with animals, and especially dogs, because dogs are like most, they express what they love most, yeah, yeah. like or most openly. Is I, I always think it's so amazing. Whenever we people come come home, for example, so the, the animals are always, always, like a hundred percent happy to see us. Oh yes, if yes. If people could do this, would do the same thing. Wow. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> you know that is such a big lesson. And when I come back to the house and I'm just kind of dragging and dragging my sore body around and thinking, oh, what a world it is. And I walk to the door and she's just so happy to see me and jumping up and down and kissing mm-hmm. me. And it's like she's never seen me before. <laughs> you know, and you can't yeah. stay in a bad mood for for a second when, yeah. when you have that experience. You just can't, <laughs> you know. Yeah. They have a very unique mission. Yeah. Like a love mission. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, how do how do we increase increase our love power? Um, because that seems to be uh, a recurring message throughout the ages. You know, love is all there is, and mm-hmm. and the love heals everything. And it it's been said so many different ways, and yet and yeah. repeatedly, and over and over. And yet, it does seem to be the the core of everything mm-hmm. that that it, it all comes back to love. <laughs> It is. It is. And I always think that it's important, which is also probably heard many, many times, uh-huh. is to, to have this, uh, <clears throat> this love for ourselves. And, mm. and how, we, how we do that is, is we, may, we create the relationship with ourselves. Mm. It's like with everybody. We, as more we... we uh, uh, we connect with somebody, as more time we spend with somebody, as more we fall in love with these either people or animals or things that we do. Yeah. It's and and, and it's like really as as more time as more energy in, we invest in something. Yes, yes. Then that's something that kind of help helps. It's not like the only thing, but something that I have found uh, really helps, and it's, it's the same thing. We, we often do it, and most of the time, and uh, we do it with other people. Mm. We we invest this time and energy into other people or uh, different situations, but mm. often we forget about investing time in ourselves. Yes, very good, very and, good. Yeah, but once we do that, then everything else just sort of falls into place. Yes, yes. And often we don't even need to do anything else like outside that because we're just radiating this energy of of love. Yes, yes, I agree with that. Um, you know, and so many people are looking, they're looking for, they're trying to figure out how to love themselves by having a relationship with someone else yeah. who <laughs> they are trying to get to, to love them to fill the hole that has, they only they can fill themselves. Yeah. And so you have this, all these dysfunctional relationships of yeah. people trying to, uh, you know, suck the love out of someone else and, and heal themselves, and it can never work. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, I that's think, really important. And I think these, these days also about this, uh, this, you know, people losing these jobs, and also I have experienced, maybe it's just I'm surrounded by people like that, but I've experienced so many people breaking up or so many families splitting yeah. up. I, yeah. and, I, and I really think that it is, uh, like the, the reason for that has been that they have not loved themselves in the first place. And, and now that, that these energies and things are changing, it, it becomes more and more clear. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's, yes. But, uh, yes, I totally agree with you. Yeah, so it's... And then it looks, from the outside, you know, if you're looking at it, it looks quite chaotic. But really, really, it's just the truth is surfacing. Yes, it is. The truth is Mm -hmm. coming to the light. And, you know, the Mm -hmm. truth is a lot of people aren't supposed to be together, you know, or they're just hanging on for, you know, the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a really good point, too. 
And uh, yeah, it also has to do a lot with attachments. I think oh, this yeah. way there's also our, our learning. Um, even if it doesn't happen to us, maybe uh, at the moment or so, but still by by seeing like people happening, it happening to the people around or so that it, it has to do with attachments. Like also how much, how can we uh, let go or what can we do of like letting go? Or yes. how, how ready we are to let go, how willing we are to let go and do something. Yes, yes. Open. And what is it they say that uh, if you let something, someone go uh, with love, uh, and, and they come back to you? Oh, I can't remember how it goes, but uh-huh. something about if you let people go with love, and they'll come back to you. And if they don't, then they weren't supposed. Then they didn't love you anyway. <laughs> yes, it is exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how can people? You know, you mentioned with those busy lives and televisions and distractions and cell phones and little gadgets and things, how can we <laughs> empower ourselves and motivate ourselves to discover what really makes us happiest? Um, one thing is maybe not maybe it's just a very simple thing. Uh, it requires to, to to just be with themselves. Some people say, like, do the meditation, uh-huh. um, but uh, it can be just be by themselves. Just take time. Let's say even five minutes yeah. would do at the beginning for for people who are busy. And I think five minutes is something that everybody could find uh, yeah. <laughs> in a day. And sometimes we even say, well, you know, if you are at the work, just go in the bathroom if you need, like, five minutes. Yeah. Just yeah. a minute. Just take a couple deep breaths, and breath is something that I found to be a very, very important thing, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. There are like millions of people who have found it to be very important because, um, and and what I call is like this belly breath because of our inner power center, this, like this connection with our true self, it's in our belly, like in solar plexus area, uh-huh. right? or between the belly button and the, the rib cage. Okay. And if we just breathe... Uh, like have the shallow breath in our chest, no. so this this fresh air doesn't go to, doesn't reach like directly our inner power center. Ah. So if we just take two deep breaths, just even one deep breath, uh-huh. where we breathe with our belly, ah. that that's already that only takes few seconds. And that already creates that connection, oh, like in, invokes something, um, and it's not really something like touchable, but but it invokes something within us, mm. and and helps us this connection. It's almost like yeah, opening the door already. Oh, interesting. It's like you know when people say, "Oh, well, just take a few deep breaths," just like yeah. before the show, just yeah. take <laughs> deep breaths. <laughs> It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we and, get so absorbed that we forget to breathe. Yes, and that's like the beginning because then we start to notice, oh, how we actually breathe, and yeah. and, and and how we and and then we we can start to notice like our body. How do we feel actually? Just here, I'm I am all by myself. I could do like anything, but no, I, I just choose to be by myself at the moment. Uh-huh. Just take a few deep breaths and then. Okay, how do I actually feel right now? Mm. And, 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 and then just notice how body feels. And not think in the mind, but just notice how body feels. And mm-hmm. body always gives messages. I think, I believe it's impossible not to, to, to feel anything. You might feel some tension in the shoulders or maybe somewhere else. Oh, just yeah. noticing how we feel. Yeah. And, and, and then, like, from there, just can do some, some uh, uh, can ask some questions, like, just in our mind, okay, so what do I do? I feel this tension in my body, so what do I do to let go of it? Mm-hmm. So how can I improve my life? Or, or, like, okay, I have this situation now, this challenging situation, what can I do? And just put out this question and so on. That's kind of those little tiny steps that we can do that take only few seconds or few minutes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which which is very simple to do, I believe, for for even the busiest, most busiest people. 
Yeah. Or when yeah. we take a shower, we can do that. Everybody does it. It's not something we, yeah. we, we do. It, when we take a shower, we can imagine that we cleanse away uh, everything that, that we don't need anymore. Yes, yes, I like that one. I do that myself. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah. that's something that doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. And of course, if people want to learn more on, and, and, and uh, you know, get in touch with their true self more, there's always like information and opportunities and abundance everywhere to be found. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's, and it seems like it's becoming easier to get the information lately. Yeah. Yes, it is. All the books and, and the radio shows. <laughs> yes, well, you, you have your radio show too, don't you? Yes, I do. So I what do. kind of guests do you have on your show? Well, what happens, my radio show is called Embrace Your Uniqueness. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, I am uh, having, I'm focusing on on one topic each month. Oh. So there's a specific topic for each month. Oh. And then I have guests that are more or less, less uh, experts in this topic. Oh, so and then we we talk about it and sometimes we do readings on the show. It's uh, you know call in so people can always call in and ask questions and and uh, and uh, yeah that's kind of like this. This month is a gratitude month. Oh, that's a good one. We can never have too much gratitude. Yeah. So we're talking about the gratitude. Next month is. And, the month of miracles and angels. Ooh, that sounds like a good one too. <laughs> Where is your show? Is that at? Uh, what's the website for your show? Oh, it is at earthangelradio.com. Okay. <clears throat> that sounds like an interesting show. It's not a BBS radio show, apparently, is it? No. No. no, no. Well, that's okay. We'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm worried for a moment. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> it's all in the family. <laughs> um, you talk a little bit about orbs, too, and I know that's becoming very popular. Um, mm -hmm. People are starting to take photographs with digital cameras and things, and, and orbs seem to be showing up everywhere. I mean, it's it's almost become a commonplace. Uh, do you have experiences with orbs, and what are they? Yes, I do. I actually had these experiences when I was little. Oh. Huh. Already with orbs. I saw these different lights, like there were light round orbs. And I didn't know what, what they were. I just saw these different colored lights floating in the air. Ooh. So my mom wanted to take me to the eye doctor when I started to tell about them. So I kind of stopped <laughs> telling. But then I remember I was just, the orbs were showing me, like asking me to follow them. Oh, wow. And, and I wasn't aware of it. Like I wasn't kind of thinking actually much about it. I, I just saw them and I asked my friends, do you see them? Do you see them? And they was like, what are you talking about? And, and then I saw this orb was floating floating away, and I started to follow the orbs, and then they would just, just uh, I didn't follow really far, <laughs> yeah. because they, they sort of, they, they let me out through the door, and like, I had to open the door, so they would, they would get out. <laughs> uh, right, right. I mean, I'm sure they could get out too, but like, you know, the one they follow, and then they sort of like disappeared. Huh. Like once we walked out, and I never really thought, as a child, I never really thought of asking them what they are or, well, or, or what they. Yeah, it sounds like they, maybe there were nature spirits. Yeah, it it is possible because I've heard about the orbs, like you know, when there are little white colored orbs, so those would be angels, yeah, or more angelic energy. But then there are colored orbs that they are more related to fairy and nature angels. Yeah. Energy. You know, it's kind of interesting because I have a friend in Georgetown who's an artist, mm -hmm. and uh, he paints these interesting paintings with uh, their their landscapes. And where the pro where he lives is a very old property with a two thousand year old oak tree, and wow. in every painting you can see faces everywhere. It's it's wow. it's like you just look into it and it takes you down this mystical path and. And there, and then all of a sudden, you see this face in the distance, and then there's another one, and they're like nature spirits. They're really beautiful. So, I mean, I totally believe in all of that. I I think that the the unseen realm is much more real than we could possibly imagine. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think they feel more uh, more safe to come out now because because of the same fact that more and more people are open to this spirituality and mm-hmm. and and uh, more and more people are open to to all these uh, things that in the past may have been considered to be weird and not normal. Yeah. They are becoming more normal and more okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. Um, and that, <laughs> yeah, so Regina, we're almost out of time, okay. and I wanted to make sure that people knew how to find your book and your website before we go. Um, yes, yeah, so my website is stardusthealing.com. Okay. And um, that's where you can find all the information. There is a link to the book. You can also read the introduction, like the first few pages. Wonderful. There to just find out what it's all about. And there you can see also a few other things that I do. And there are some pictures as well. Uh, and it uh, kind of gives more sense. Uh, well, it's a beautiful book, Regina. And, uh, you know, you. It, you can... It's you can if you just feel the love you know that comes out of it and uh, I I want to thank you for sending me a copy for my my own uh, personal use. There's a lot of good stuff in there. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> well, thank. I appreciate you being on the show, and I I send you many blessings and lots of love, and uh, just a big thank you and a hug for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on the show. All right, and I'll tune in to yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and blessings to you, all who are listening, and to your show, too. Oh, thanks a million, Regina. Good night. <laughs> Good night.